So. So, on this, you'll note up at the top of the page, I've written a couple of notes. Probably do you well to put the same notes up there. We're going to find a common denominator. We're going to build fractions, okay, just like we did before. However, once we build the fractions this time, we are going to wipe out the denominator and we're going to solve it because now it looks, ooh, we have equals now. We have equations. We can actually solve these. But the one thing we have to be careful of with this is making sure that when I get an answer, it's not causing a zero in the denominator. Well, because division by zero is undefined, and we can't have that. Will it happen a lot? No. Will it happen enough that you really do need to take a second and check the answers and make sure that's not happening? Absolutely. So, first job on every one of these is to figure out what your common denominator is going to be. So, for number one... Just looking at my denominators, what's my LCD going to be? That's my front one. Wait, where are we at? Yeah, just. I'm on two different sides, sorry. Okay. All right, let's just three then. So okay. just. That's good. Wow. Well, what about. 3x. Again, coefficients, well they're both 3, it's not that hard to figure out then. Single variables. Okay, again, there's not a strong bond here. So that x is just the x. Now I can need a 3 and an x and a 3x, okay? So 3x is going to be my LCD. So just like we've been doing, I'm going to keep my numerator, whatever was there to begin with, and just like we'd been doing when we were just adding and subtracting without the equations, we're going to look at our old denominator and then look at our new one. Trace. Okay, right. I've got the x. I don't have the 3 that's there. Okay, so I need the 3. In the next fraction... I add the 3 and the x. I don't need anything, so I just leave the 1. And then what about my last equation? Negative x. No. So. I have the 3. I just need an x. Once you've built your fractions, the denominator at this point has done its job. It will now go away. Because basically what my next step would be would be to multiply through by that, and who wants to take the extra step if I know what's, what's going to happen. So here, 7 times 3 would be 21 minus 1 equals 5x. Okay, So the denominator only helps us to get our new fractions built, to get our new numerators, then it's gone. And we solve what's left. But again, before I move to the next problem, I make sure that 4, if I plug it into my denominators, doesn't cause one of them to become 0. And it doesn't, so that's a good answer. That one works out okay. So you're like, this is a lot like what we've been doing. It is. When I look at 2, again, reminder, you're just looking at denominators at the start here. So when I'm doing that... Can I factor any of them? Nine. The last one. The last one. Okay. So what's that going to look like factored? X plus 2, X minus 2. Isn't that going to be Yep. And once I do that, right, my LCD... I don't have any coefficients. I don't have any single variables that aren't connected. So my LCD is x plus 2, x minus 2. So once again, and if you need to move over to number 3, you can. So x plus 2 and x minus 2, because they're my unique quantities. 
Each one that's different we include. And when I go fraction building, remember, whatever's up there already, still there. And then just puzzle it. So I got the x minus 2. I need an x plus 2. In the second fraction, I have x plus 2. I need x minus 2. And in the last one, I have everything already, so I don't need anything at all. And again, once you've built the fractions, not until then. Combine. Okay, right. The denominator at that point has done its job. We don't need it anymore. And now it's just distribute and combine like terms. So, do one more here before we move over. So we've got 3x squared plus 6x. And I got a plus here. So plus x minus 2 equals negative 4. So I'm like, all right, well, let's see. Now, how's this going to work? i got all these x's. If I have an x squared, everything needs to be on the x squared side. Because we're going to have to factor this. So I've got 3x squared, 6x and x is 7x. And I'm going to add the 4 over to this side because then I'm going to end up with a positive 2 and an equal 0. And that's something I can factor. So for our time purposes, and also the fact that the numbers are small, that will factor. So 3x minus 1, x minus 2. Except that it's plus, yes. Same. So I'm looking for two numbers to multiply to 2. Well, duh, 2 and 1 and add to 7. So I've got 1x and 6x comes to 7x. You could do slide and divide if you wanted to for that. And then I set these each equal to 0 to figure out what my solutions are going to be. Now, before you just circle it and say, okay, I'm good, Which one's the right one? and go on to the next one. Now, you can have two answers for some of these, but let's go back and look for a minute. If I take negative 1 third, okay, that's not going to cause 0. That's fine. Negative 2. Okay, negative 2 minus 2, that's negative 4. Negative zero. 2 plus 2, 0. Bad. I only have one answer. Is it possible sometimes that both of your answers will cause a problem? Yes. So you may have one solution. You may have two. You may have none. I can't guarantee this. So here's, here's what I'd like you to consider doing. The assignment is up on the board, but I will also put it here for a moment. So we will be working on five... five 71, 22 to 30 even, 34 to 38 even. Now, you can get a start on the 22 to 30 part, okay? Some of the other ones are going to get a little more complex. We're going to talk about those and continue this tomorrow. Okay? But there will also be tomorrow us working the worksheet into this. So there will be lots of work time in class tomorrow.